Brixen, oldest town of Tyrol, is a small city located in the Italian Alps. Since I started exploring the city of Brixen, a particular area has always caught my attention. A peaceful location outside the city center where you actually enjoy walking and hanging out? Well, I wanted to know a little bit more about it, and this led me to discover a local modern urban project known to few. This is the Roslav district, built car-free in the 80s. And this is shared spaces. So, hey. In the 1970s and 1980s, with the rapid growth of Brixen and the urgent need for housing, new expansion areas were identified. Construction had mainly focused in the Milan district located southeast, which had become a neighborhood literally suffocated by rather random construction of residential buildings. Milan established its own identity only in the last decade when it gained new parks, schools and cycling and pedestrian connections to the rest of the network. For the Roslav area, the goal was to avoid the mistakes made in Milland. In the past, the Roslav area had always been exploited for its agricultural value. During the Roman area, it was first the site of military buildings and then of civilian uses, as shown by the archaeological excavations. Throughout the early Middle Ages, it was grazing land with few human activities and remained a stretch of meadows intersected by streams and canals. Meanwhile, Brixen had become the Emperor's Road, given the vibrant movement of people and goods through this border region between Northern and Southern Europe, it's easy to imagine the necessity of a large space for resting horses, which were the primary means of transportation at the time. Not surprisingly, in German, the word Ross is an ancient word for horse. Even Napoleon's army crossed the meadows of Roslauf. Roslav is located between the northern limits of the historic center and the Vincentinum Seminary built at the end of the 19th century. Until 1980, it remained largely devoid of buildings. Local architect Otmar Barth formulated the implementation plan for the area in 1981, based on his initial idea from the 1970s. This plan included precise constraints on the use of the public spaces and the relationship of the neighborhood with the rest of the city. A large agricultural area of 12 hectares was about to become an organic part of the city, not a new isolated suburb. The district was divided into six zones that were then individually assembled over more than 30 years. And the result is what we see today. Overall, the development remained faithful to Barth's original plan. In order to ensure a good quality of life for its inhabitants, the entire settlement was structured on the principle of separating car traffic from pedestrian traffic, and thus consisting of green and compact residential spaces that protect the neighborhood from the noise of cars. This kind of development allowed car traffic to be blocked at the edges, where ramps lead to underground parking facilities designated for residents' use. The entire neighborhood is surrounded and intersected by paths and limited traffic streets. In the heart of the neighborhood, a church was supposed to be built, but the undeveloped area in the meantime spontaneously became the main and official square of the entire settlement. The planning model is that of a sort of a garden city conceived in the late 19th century in the UK, with parks for children and spaces for leisure. The areas where public facilities are located remain under city ownership. Conversely, spaces primarily intended for residents are privately owned but must be accessible to all. In the main access streets, the city has installed informative maps to remind citizens and visitors of the important role that Roslauf has played in the city's development. As of April 2024, the northern access is temporarily open to car traffic for a small stretch. 
due to a temporary parking lot serving the hospital, pending the reconstruction of its adjacent parking lot. To maintain a good connection with the historic center, the architect Bart had planned pedestrian paths like the one to the south, which in 2007 became a comfortable and spacious pedestrian and cycling underpass. Coming from the city center, one doesn't perceive the typical separation with a suburb that you might expect. The tall 9th floor residential towers deliberately identify the neighborhood, as do the single sloped roofs and the white plaster of all the buildings, which gave them aesthetic and functional unity despite the time frame of the construction and the large number of designers involved. Today, Roslov is home to around 2,500 people and is one of the most densely populated districts of the city offering a variety of amenities including cafes, bakeries, a restaurant, as well as essential services like a pharmacy and a supermarket. There is also a high school with its gym built in 2002, a kindergarten and its under construction expansion indicating that the area is still in development. Living in Roslov makes the use of a car unnecessary, shops are within walking distance, and the city centre is only a few minutes away. The Vincentinum bus stop serves as a hub for all urban and suburban bus lines, providing connections to every direction. The train station can be reached with an average frequency of 5 minutes. In 2013, a survey was carried out to analyse bicycle usage in every part of the city. Can you guess the results? Well, it's no coincidence that Roslov showed the highest rate, where 70% of residents use bikes every day. Yet another proof that when we provide people with livable and safe spaces, they prefer to get around in active and sustainable ways. Living in Roslov is great. Even cats agree. Walking through it, you might perceive an unusual piece that we usually take for granted only in pedestrianized historic centers especially in Italian cities. This project shows us that for half a century we've known that people like to live in such spaces. We know how to build them and we've been successful in doing so. The history and development of Roslov are not widely known. However, this project continues to stand as a small yet cutting-edge urban gem, remaining highly relevant in modern times. It urges us to reflect on whether we truly prefer to continue living like this or to begin living like this. This video was not sponsored. A big thanks goes to the Library of Brixen and Library on Bos and Bolzano and the Municipality of Brixen for providing useful information for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.